Hi, Ninja Nerds. In this video, we're going to be talking about preterm labor. If you like it, make sure you give it a thumbs up, comment down below, don't forget to subscribe, and check out ninjanerd.org where we have all of our notes and illustrations for these videos for you guys to check out to help you study. But let's get started here on preterm labor. What are we talking about today? So preterm labor is different than preterm birth. So let's get this out of the head that we're going to be giving birth. We are strictly just talking about the process of preterm labor. And preterm labor is when a woman is somewhere between 20 to 22 to 37 weeks. So roughly in those areas. Um, and they are either having uterine contractions and cervical changes. And they're between or before 37 weeks, roughly after 20 weeks. So what we're looking at here is two things that we have to clarify with our patient. Are they having the uterine contractions? Are they having cervical changes? So let's quickly review what the uterus is. Remember that it's this hollow organ here that's located in the women's pelvis, and it helps with menstruation and pregnancy and fertilization. And this organ plays a vital role in all those processes, where the cervix is this lower portion of our uterus, and that is where we have a canal that forms this distinction between our vagina and our uterus is right between here we have our cervix. So we need to focus on if we're in preterm labor, how are we going to identify truly that we're in preterm labor? So we're going to first talk about a uterine contraction. And remember, with a uterine contraction, it's very simple. The uterus is going to contract, right? Or it's going to tighten and squeeze. And when that happens, we are going to have this experience of something squeezing internally, um, and I like to describe it as like a stress ball or something. When you squeeze, right, on a ball, you're squeezing the whole thing in, because what is a point, what is the point of a contraction? Ninja nerds, like what, why is the woman experiencing contractions? It's to push baby out, right? So it's gonna squeeze and shrink and tighten and push baby out, because we're trying to get baby out of the uterus. For the cervix, we're going to be talking about two different processes that we need to identify as cervical changes. The, the first word that you've probably heard before is effacement. Um, another word for it is thinning. And what we're looking at here is this process of the cervix becoming thinner, 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 and to the point where it is now the patient is fully effaced, meaning the cervix is now completely thinned out and it is now in position to start dilation. And dilation is when we have the opening. All right, so we have this opening and that's when our cervix starts to separate or open up a little bit. And as it does that and as the, the cervix opens up, we are creating a nice dilation or an opening for baby to exit out of mommy and be born. But in preterm labor, we are going to identify, is our patient below before 37 weeks, are they having contractions and are they real, true contractions? And are they either having a cervical change of an effacement or even to the point of dilation? So what could cause all this to occur with our patient? The first is uterine distension. And this is distension meaning like pushing out or um, bulging. And there's two ways that that can occur, is either there's multiple gestations, which we understand is many babies, right? If mom is giving birth to triplets, then there's going to be a bigger distension or a bigger push out on the stomach, as well as polyhydramnios, not a lot of babies, but a lot of fluid. So again, it's making mom possibly appear larger than her um, weekly checkups. She may be measuring bigger and farther along. So these dis um, uterine distension can cause that push out or cause that experience of preterm labor because now we have baby that's getting closer to possibly pushing into effacement and that thinning and then having that dilation. And if baby comes down and has their head ready to go, ready to come into the world, we may be in preterm labor. Another cause of this could be stress, and there's this axis, the HPA or the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis. So from the hypothalamus to our pituitary to our adrenal, we have this access system that when you are triggered or when it is triggered, it will help you release a stress hormone, and that stress hormone can also trigger labor. And then we also have an infection or inflammation, really depends on what's going on with mom, 
what type of inflammation slash infection they have, as well as last, anything that's going on with the placenta, like a placental abruption or even placenta previa, where we have an issue with the placenta and all of these separately, or if you unfortunately have them all together, can cause experiences of preterm labor, labor. And the whole point of preterm labor for us as a provider is to determine is our patient in preterm labor and at what stage are they at and can we help hopefully stop it. So let's go on to talk about what are some of those risk factors and the signs and symptoms that we can help for our patient to determine if they are indeed in preterm labor. All right, so let's talk about the risk factors of preterm labor and what we're looking at here is there are some that are considered clinically risk factors and then there's some that they suspect that there are some risk factors within them. So the ones that they suspect that we can possibly modify would be the smoking and the substance abuse because you want to think about how smoking and certain substances that are illicit can cause that vasoconstriction which can possibly cause preterm labor. We're also going to be looking at things like preeclampsia or hypertension for our mom, as well as placenta previa or abruption, and then also the infections like we mentioned before for those causes. And those other risk factors that we're going to be looking into is, has this patient had a history of preterm labor before or preterm birth? Do they have a multifetal pregnancy? Is there any type of premature dilation of the cervix or those uterine abnormalities? So those risk factors are things that we just need to identify when we talk to our patient. And then we're also gonna start assessing them and looking at those signs and symptoms and trying to figure out, is our patient truly in preterm labor? So the first sign and symptom, we're gonna go back and talk about that uterine contraction. So our patient comes in and they're saying they're having this pain, they're having this discomfort, or they're saying, I'm having contractions. So what we need to do is to decide and assess our patient and say, are these true or false contractions? Is our patient having contractions at all or is there something else going on? So the first things we can do is figure out, are these contractions regular? Are we timing them? Are we able to see them? Are they painful? Where is the pain? What type of pain? And then are they having any type of activity decrease? So when they do walk around, are the contractions less? Are they less intense? Do they feel less painful? And we're gonna also utilize our machines that we have in our facility and we're gonna hook the mom up to the monitor so we can see the contractions on the tocolytic device. So we're gonna be able to watch them and see how it goes along with their symptoms. We're also gonna be looking at cervical dilation. So are they effaced and is their dilation progressing? What we're looking at here is we may have to do some type of in inspection. We're gonna maybe look through with a speculum, check the cervix. This is something that the doc's gonna come in. They may also want to swab, and we'll talk about the different types of swabs and tests that we can do at that time, and really get eyes on the cervix and see if there's anything else going on. We're also gonna be asking them about persistent low back pain or pelvic pressure, because when they're having these contractions or they're having this dull pain in between, is it located in the back? Is it located in the front? Is it low in the uterus? Is it high? All of these are going to help us decide, is our patient in true or false labor? Are they having any changes in their vaginal discharge? Is there blood, is there mucus, is it a lot, is it a little, Has it have an uh, odor? Because all of that is also going to tell us something is going on. And then one of the big things we wanna look into is premature rupture of membranes. And the premature rupture of membranes, if you forgot, is when you have a rupture of the membranes within the mother before labor has begun. So mom's just walking around, all of a sudden she has premature rupture and labor has not even started. But when someone is in preterm labor and they have a rupture of membranes, we call it PPROM, which is preterm premature rupture of membranes. And if they have that, that is also an indication that they might also truly be in preterm labor or about to start. If anything is persistent, you're concerned, you wanna make sure you're telling your patient to contact their OBGYN. Hopefully along this point they have gotten themselves to the hospital or they've gotten themselves to their OBGYN clinic, so they're gonna be able to be seen and assessed by their provider. So let's go in and talk about how we are going to intervene with our patient, how we're gonna take care of them, and what we're gonna be looking for in order to make sure that we can stop preterm labor so that we don't have a preterm birth. Now that we've assessed our patient, we're gonna go in and help perform some tests with our provider in order to get further information about our patient. And the first thing that we're gonna look at is the FFN or the fetal fibronectin. This is a protein that's, a, uh, that's present within the amniotic sac uh, 
and the uterine wall. So what it does is it holds the glue between those two when a woman is pregnant. And if that's present, there may be a possibility that our mother is in preterm labor. And what we do is we take a vaginal swab, it comes back positive, there is an increased risk for preterm labor. However, what this is also looking at is a lot of false positives. So you have to remember that there are indications for false positive. If there was some type of lube with in the vaginal canal or when the speculum was inserted, as well as sperm, those can trigger false positives. So you wanna ask your patient if they have had sex in the last 24 hours, because that can also be an indication that they possibly have a false positive and this isn't a true positive. So because that test is good but not great, we also wanna go into and assess our patient in other ways. Making sure that their CBC and type and screen is there in case this patient is going to indeed give birth and we may have to perform a C-section. A urine analysis to check their urine for any type of bacteria, monitor their contractions, the digital cervix as well as the uh, speculum exam and also an ultrasound of the cervix length. And all of these will tell us the length of the cervix. If it's a shorter cervix, the mother is more than likely to give preterm birth compared to longer cervixes. The contractions are gonna help tell us if they are true contractions that are stronger, shorter, together and then we're also going to be looking at everything else that comes back within the blood work. So the whole goal for our patient-centered care here is to give them the best outcome and that best outcome is going to hopefully be depending where they are within this preterm because remember it's a big gap here of weeks. It could be 20 weeks, it, they could be 36 weeks right before 37 weeks. So what is going on with our patient, what is going on in our facility, and how can we then decide what is the best pathway for our patient? So the generic or the simple guideline is what we're gonna be presenting today of what are the things that we can give in certain situations. This isn't just one patient every time, same treatment. So it's gonna be different. What we're looking at here is 50% of women that do have preterm labor will possibly have a preterm birth. So that means the other 50% we do the same thing for, they're gonna go home, they're gonna make it to 40 weeks or 38 weeks, and then they're gonna come back and give birth. So how do we get the best chance for our patient and what are the things that we are going to do? The best outcome for them is to first give those corticosteroids and that is for our baby's lungs. Remember our surfactant within our baby's lungs is not developed yet. So we wanna make sure we're going to help them. And what we're gonna, we're gonna do is we're gonna give them betamethasone or dexamethasone. And these are steroids that are gonna go, they're gonna help with that surfactant, they're gonna help baby grow and get stronger so that when they come out of mom, maybe a little early, they are still gonna have no issues with breathing. So that's a good thing that we wanna do. So this is a med that we're gonna be giving for mom for baby. Then there's also tocolytics we can be giving, and tocolytics, you have to remember, are the medications that are gonna help us suppress our contractions. So if mom is indeed in preterm labor, we want to give them medications like nifedipine or tributylene, and there's a couple others that we can give, even NSAIDs, depending on the type uh, and the facility has. We can give them to help suppress the contractions to hopefully let the uterus relax and slow down labor and hopefully stop labor. We're also gonna go into magnesium sulfate, this is proven to help increase the neuro outcome of baby by decreasing the chances of cerebral palsy within the baby. And there's also antibiotics. So because mom is coming in early, they could be coming in early in certain areas. And in that 34 weeks, they may not have had their GBS screening yet. And their GBS is that group B strep that is present that baby can get an infection from. And we don't want baby to be born with an infection because it's one thing to have a preterm baby, it's another to have a preterm baby with an infection. So some of the antibiotics that we can be giving mom to help out with baby are ampicillin and gentamicin. And there's a, a plethora of others that we can give, even vancomycin, not that we wanna give our patient that, but depending on what mom's allergic uh, allergies are to any type of allergic reaction to ampicillins or penicillins, we wanna be just looking at mom as a whole as well as baby to say which is the best antibiotic that we can give them for the best outcome against the group B strep. So if we do all these things or a little combination of two, mom may go home, come back 38 weeks and then give birth. But if we are doing all these things and mom is still progressing, we have to start planning for preterm birth. We can no longer suppress labor and we may have to get ready for birth. And that's when we have to do the immediate delivery, especially if there is an increase in bleeding. So mom is having a lot of bleeding. She's having a decrease in the fetal well-being. So baby is stressed and baby's not doing great. And then 
indeed there was a premature rupture of the membrane. So the membranes have ruptured because now at this point, mom is truly going to give birth. If we do get these medications and mom is able to go home and continue through her pregnancy, we want to make sure we are giving them some in information and education. The most important thing is the activity restriction. We want to make sure we are not having sexual intercourse anymore. We are taking time going up and down steps and we are using a restriction on our activity so that we are able to help baby heal and not give any other issues to our pregnancy. We also want to ensure they're staying hydrated because remember there are also issues when mom is dehydrated there can cause issues with the amniotic fluid with baby and then also monitor the fetal heart rate and the contraction patterns so they can be able to do their kick counts at home they can use an app to be able to track the contractions in order to figure out what is going on and making sure that we are keeping an eye on them because we don't want baby coming out sooner than when baby is ready so I hope that made sense, Ninja Nerds. I hope you really liked this video. We talked about preterm labor. And as always, until next time.